Hi guys, this is Jenny from Art by Jenny K. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to make a cover for that rainbow journal that I showed you a few pages from last time. Uh, and then I'm, we're going to do a flip through of the journal and it'll all be done. Yay! I've been working on it for a while so I'm, I'm ready to be done with it. You know, it's always fun. You, you have a project and you're excited to do it and it's fun but sometimes it kind of takes longer than you think it's going to and you're ready to be done. So I'm ready to be done. I like it, but I'm ready to be done with it. So I want to show you some different options that I, I came up with for the cover. I haven't I haven't really kind of decided. I sort of have decided which one I like, but, but at the time I wasn't sure. I thought, well, I'm going to do a couple different things and we'll see what, what looks good. So I started with just painting some rainbow stripes in watercolor on paper and I just used basic watercolors for this. This was not anything um, you know extravagant or, or difficult. I just kind of did swipes of you know red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Uh, and then I went back and spattered some of the other colors that that I didn't use. There's some pink and some grays and some kind of a, a yellowy green. So I just kind of spattered it to make it look rainy and more interesting. Um, and I just did this on regular paper. This is kind of a, a large sheet. It's not actually watercolor paper, but it is a, a little bit heavier paper. Um, it's 12 by 18. I thought if I made a big sheet, then that would be plenty to do a front and a back cover and maybe still have some leftovers. So I, I did multiple cover uh, options thinking that whatever I didn't use, I would just put in my stash and use for something else. Uh, at a later date, maybe put in a junk journal or something. So that's option one, watercolors. Option two is I, I went through magazines and did kind of collaged uh, stripes of color. So there's the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And then it, it looked pretty rough and pretty glossy, so I stenciled over it in just some, in some white, in some flat white paint. So that's just, again, same paper. I just used the same, same paper, same size, and just did some stripes with magazine, uh, just torn magazine pages, and I just kind of tore out little pieces of the colors and, and did stripes until I had filled that stripe color, and, and then I uh, just stenciled over it because I thought that made it more interesting looking and a little less shiny. It was, it was pretty shiny, and, and it was just kind of... It was kind of blah without the without the stenciling on it. So that toned it down. You can still see the colors through the white because of the stenciling. Um, it didn't cover it up completely, but it, it definitely gave it a little more pizzazz. And then the last option is some fabric. So again, I just used the same size uh, paper. It's the same sheet of paper. And I used some fabric tack and kind of just tacked down the center of the fabric. And then I went back and stitched it. Um, I have never uh, sewn on paper before and so this was a new adventure for me and it, it worked pretty well and I was excited. Um, a couple of them you see I kind of had to piece, you know, so these were just scraps um, of fabric from, from my bin. So I just, I just kind of uh, pulled some stuff out and, and made some stripes. So I really like the fabric. I like that it's bright. Um, we are going to put some stuff over the front cover, um, but I, I think I'm going to use that one. And then I'm contemplating using this on the inside cover, um, just because it's a little more, you know, just a little more muted and, and kind of interesting on the inside. So I think we're going to we're going to do that now. Then I went ahead. I went ahead and cut a couple of little pieces of cardboard. Um, and it's pretty thin that I'm going to use for the cover, the front and back cover. Remember, it was a ring binder journal, so um, it doesn't, I don't have to sew it in, so I don't need a, a spine. It's just going in a ring binder as a front and a back. Um, but then I realized that I, I made the stripes kind of so big that I, you're not going to get all of the stripes on one cover. <laughs> So I guess if I had realized that to start with, maybe I would have made the stripes smaller. Um, but alas, sometimes I, I don't think ahead necessarily. So I'm thinking that I would probably start at, you know, the red on one side and then on the back, 
I'll probably start so that it gets the purple. So between the two sides, all the colors will be there, but they won't all be there on, on, one, on one cover. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this down a little bit and we're going to wrap it around the edge so that the inside edge uh, is a little more finished and that the, the raw edges of the cardboard are covered. Uh, and then we'll, we'll glue a piece of, uh, of the um, rainbow um, watercolor paper, this one, probably on the inside just to kind of echo it. Although I don't know, now looking at the inside, maybe we want that one. So my pack is trying to get in or out. So let me open the door. Oh, come on. Hurry up, Go-Go. Come on. <laughs> so when you have pets and you do this kind of thing, they, they definitely um, have a mind of their own. So I'm just gonna kind of flip this over and just eyeball. I, I want enough to, you know, to definitely fold over the edges um, to make sure that the edges are covered. So I think, I think we'll just kind of eyeball it here a little bit. That should be plenty. Leaves us plenty for the back. And then we can probably definitely just cut along that purple on the bottom because we're going to end up cutting it off anyway. And oh, we'll save that. That's a nice scrap for something else. Okay. Went to all the trouble of sewing that, and now I've just cut off where I've sewed. Let's see how that looks on that side. That looks pretty good. Okay. All right. So. I don't want this moving. And then I also am going to lay some, oops, lay some glue along the edges so that we can turn that over. Fold it a little bit so I know where I'm going. I'll do the corners first. Those are going to be a little thick, maybe. Well, maybe not. So, I might have to get some clips and clip it down a little bit just to hold it while it dries, just a little, because it is a little thicker with the fabric. Okay. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so, put our scissors on there to hold that while we do another corner. That's the only thing about doing something that's a little heavier is you kind of have to make sure it's going to be held down. All right, it's going to stick. We'll just set some heavy things on them to stick while we do the other ones. <laughs> That's my strategy is just to, you know, whatever I have at hand, I'll just set it on there to make it stay. It seems like this is heavier, so we'll set both of them on there. That works. I could definitely put a clip on it. I just need to get up and get a clip. So that might be helpful. And of course, because I cut the, the sewing off there, that edge is now <clears throat> open. But it'll all come down here in a minute because we're going to cover it anyway with, with what's on the back. All right. Let's 
extra glue there. Making a mess. I usually do. <laughs> okay, so we've held that one down a little bit. We'll swap and put the heavy on that side for a second. All right, while we do the, the top edge, but <clears throat> I think I am definitely going to grab a couple of clips because we're going to need those. See, Tish Monster has come over to help. <laughs> okay. Right there. on it here to hold it down while it gets good and sticky. Back to this side. And we're going to cover the inside edge anyway, so it's okay if it's a little if we get a little glue leaking there. Not that big of a deal. We're not going to see it in the end. There we go. Get some of that stuck down. Let's see how we're doing here. We could definitely you know, trim some of that off, but I kind of like to leave it if I can, just because I, every time I trim it, it seems like I cut it and then there's an edge showing and, you know, I like it sealed up nice and neat like a little package. So that's kind of, but that's kind of my predilection. <laughs> so, you know, if it bothers you, trim some of it off. Just move it to the corner. If we were just using paper, <clears throat> we probably wouldn't have to have to clip it because of the little bit of bulk from the fabric. Just makes it where you just a clip is just helpful. This makes it easier in the long run. And then this one. So those are small, so we'll clip a couple down here. Okay. All right. So that's going to be the front cover. So we're going to set that aside for a second and we'll go ahead and do the back cover. And give that a second to dry. And grab a few more clips so we have them. I'm just not quite as prepared as I think I am. Okay, so the front one we did, we started with the red at the top. So this one, we'll cut off some of the red and keep the purple. Okay, let's see how that's going to work. 
this side. Okay. So we'll we'll go for keeping the purple there instead of the red. Turn this down a little bit. That'll be a nice scrap, huh? It when things work out, it's always good. Let's see. It's not cut off. I cut, last time I cut off the whole thing, and it was coming undone. So we can maybe just cut off a little less of it. Let's see if we can get a little more. Let's see how that's going. Yep, so we're not going to see that, but we will see more of the purple. There we go. That seems like a good, a good thing. So glue-wise, I am using my Fabri-Tac. Um, since it's paper to paper, I probably don't have to, but it seems like that holds really well and I want to make sure I want to make sure that uh, I can move it around a little bit some of the other ones the the quick tack glues they uh, they catch really fast and that's great so that you don't necessarily have to put a clip on it and things like that but it also means that you can't really work with it. You don't have much wiggle room. So I thought since we were doing a, a cover, we might want a little wiggle room on those corners and things. I might have left that one kind of big, but it's okay. I think I'd rather have a little too much than, than too little. It seems like that's always a, a better choice to have a little extra. Just go ahead and do the whole end here while we're here. That might be better. Instead of clipping and unclipping like last time. Sometimes I don't always think it through. I know what I want, but I don't always know how to get there. <laughs> so. clips on the end. We'll just do the whole end. Good. We can do this in two. Just got some strings from the glue. Hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you're enjoying some time in your craft room or if you just do it at the table, wherever. Hope you have some hobby time going and that you're watching a, a video while you're doing something yourself. I always find that very relaxing. I like to watch a video and let it play while I'm doing something. And, you know, it gives me ideas as I go, but I also like to play music and sing really loudly <laughs> while I'm doing things. Right. I think everybody has something that they, they like to do. That's kind of my thing. I'm going to blast some music and sing at the top of my lungs and kind of dance around in my studio and, you know, make a mess playing with glue and paper and stuff. And then I know it's been a good day when I get to do that. Okay. Let's scoot this down a little bit so we can do the side. Right. Do 
get a little more on this side, I think, than we did on the, the front side. But that's okay. I may have some trouble getting the hole punch to go through it. But we can do that too. We'll work it out. Let's push that down. Sorry for all the clickety clack. I, I have a, a glass mat down, and I like the glass mat because things don't stick to it and it's easy to clean. But it does kind of make a clinky noise with the <laughs> with the uh, with the little doohickeys here. Hope that's not making too much of a clattery noise on the on the video. It would be annoying, I think. But. And I hope too this one that I'm doing a better job of uh, keeping the time going. The last one, I just lost track of where we were, and it went pretty long. <laughs> so I apologize if if that got a little. A little long on you, so hopefully this one will be better. Okay, all right. Now we can throw. So that's going to be the back. So let's go back to the front now. Seems like this one's probably enough. The fabric pack does hold pretty fast. It just, you know, you just need to. Give it a, a minute or two though so that's going to be our front let's see i think before we decorate the front we should go ahead and line the back so what do we think should we should we line it with this or should we line it with this one on the inside that might be more fun just on the inside I think maybe we'll save the, the watercolor one for something else and do this one on the inside. So, all right, so I want, I want this to come close to the edge out here to cover up the raw edges, but I don't want it to come all the way um, because I don't want it to stick out and all of that. So we just need to do a little measuring here. So five, I think we're still like five and a half, I think would be, Good five and a half wide by well, about eight and a half long would be a good choice on this. And I think we want to do it from the top cover up there in the red so that it matches. And we can do the same thing on the back. I don't know. I don't know how well it will actually match, but uh, I don't think I have another pen here, so I'll just use this one. So let's do a little measuring. Try not to measure too much, right? Five and a half. That's too much work if you have to measure all the time. So, you know, that's why I eyeball it. So, eyeballing, it's always a good choice. Does it? I'm not sure I did a very good job of uh, measuring because I'm not sure it's very straight, but we'll make it work. There's eight and a half.
person. Well, that's pretty good, I think. Good, good, good. You probably could have cut it a little smaller, actually, but comes not quite to the edge. That's excellent. I'm going to cover all of those raw edges, which is what we want. sure it's up to the edge here and well, then we can always add a little more if we need to side as well. Okay, just, just to be safe, I'm going to put a couple of clips on the corners while we do the other one. And then we should be ready to punch some holes and decorate the front. We'll just put them on the corners there just to make sure. I really kind of like that on one side with the that's going to be pretty. Okay, let's see how the other one's doing here. We'll do the same to it. Should be the same size, but it's a different, different uh, part of the rainbow here. But I'm just going to, just to make sure, just because I don't trust myself that I actually cut them exactly the same size. You never know. Looks like I did. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, so this one, we want to start with the purpley at the bottom. Yeah, it's okay if it doesn't quite, you know, it doesn't have to match exactly, but I mean, we could move it down so it did, but I don't think we did that on the front one. We didn't. We didn't worry about if it matched on the front, so we'll just do that on the inside here. We'll just start at the bottom. Oh, it looks like I've already done something there. Probably was marking off something else. Who knows what? All right. Obviously, I can't measure and talk at the same time. <laughs> I probably could, but I'd probably measure wrong. Okay. That should be good. is over to the side here and she's sitting on top of it chasing her tail. Oh, good. And we still have quite a bit of scrap left to do something else with later. That's always helpful. Okay. Double check. Looks like we're all right.
Again, make sure I get it up to the edge here. I know lots of people have tools to do this. It just seems like it's easier to just use your finger. Other than you have sticky fingers, so you know, there is that. There's always a drawback, but I think sometimes to me that's part of the fun is being messy. You know, when you were a kid, nobody cared if you were messy at stuff, and you just washed your hands or took a bath and moved on. And that's what I think we should do now. So, I'm gonna, you know, be as messy as you want to be, and then just wash your hands and move on. So, again, I think I'm just going to put some clips on the corners just to make sure they get stuck down well. All right, let's go back to this one, the front one. Looks like it's doing okay. Got a little bit of thread there. Okay, um, I think the next thing we should do probably is go ahead and see if we can punch the holes to put it in the binder. And I have, I have my guide that I used from the pages. So the cover is just a little bit bigger because I want it to be a little bit wider, a little bit taller. Let's just see, I'll just mark them. I think it'll be easier to mark it and put it in the hole punch than it will be to try to. So, Hopefully, the hole punch will go through this cardboard and all that fabric. Yay! It did. I, you know, I have, I have a little single hole punch, of course, um, and I had it for years. I got this one just recently for my birthday. Um, and I really love it because it doesn't require the hand strength that those little those little individual three hole punches. Gosh, I struggle with those a lot. So we're just cutting off some of the little pieces of fabric that maybe are coming out here. Um, I struggle with those a lot. I just have my my hands just aren't strong enough to to really go through that and this one is just so much better because I can use both hands and pop it down so I am I am a fan of the crocodile but you know no association there or anything just just a fan <laughs> all right so that was that went pretty easily so while that back one dries we'll go ahead and decorate this one I think so I brought along a few things. I thought it would be nice uh, to do some of the, to echo some of the things that I have done in in the journal itself. So this is a little big. We might have to cut it down a little bit. Um, and so one of the things is I used um, some of this lace on several of the pages. So I thought it would be nice to use that on the cover. I used butterflies on quite a few of the pages and I used flowers. Um, so I brought some of that as well. A little bit different iteration, but certainly. <laughs> um, so that seems good. So let's see, I brought, I brought a couple of other things. Um, I have an old, uh, one of those calendars that you um, sew the sequins on. We can cut some of this off, it's a little long. Um, so my mother-in-law always did one for me uh, every year and she gave it to me every Christmas. Um, and then afterwards I would cut off the calendar part and save all the parts that have flowers and cats and butterflies and things like that. Um, so that's what these are. These are pieces of those. And so we might want to just 
cut off that one, cut off this one flower here. It just seems a little long. And maybe we'll use that one. We could go all the way down here. We could come up a little bit. I kind of like it. Kind of like it up a little bit, maybe. There. That seems like a good spot. And then I have a couple of butterflies with flowers from the same from calendars. It might be a different calendar. Um, I really like this one. I, his wing was cut off because of another cutting him off of another flower. So I thought we could use a couple of them and maybe um, maybe overlap it so that we didn't necessarily miss his wing. Hmm. We could do this. Maybe that's too much with that one. Let's see. We need to overlap him a little bit so that we don't see his wing there. Oh, that's kind of nice. The two of them that way. Maybe we can move this one down a little. And then I wanted to put a quote on the front because I have quotes um, throughout the rainbow book that each color uh, has its own has its own uh, quote about the color and then within that I have a word about you know on each page going with those colors so I found a couple of quotes I liked and I and I wrote them on some uh, little scraps of paper uh, that are just some of the coffee dyed notebook paper that I used in the notebook is in the uh, journal as well. So I, I found two quotes and I wrote them one in, once in black and once in blue just to see how they look. Um, they seem like there maybe isn't quite enough, enough space for them but um, so I'm, I'm leaning toward the there's a rainbow after every storm and this one is when it rains look for rainbows. And I like that one, but I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I like the way this one looks. And so we could, we could maybe put it here. Hmm. If we layer that, that kind of covers it. Well, maybe we only want one butterfly up here. Don't necessarily need two of them. I can move this over here. That might be better. maybe here Let's see what kind of layout we like I, I kind of think that's nice I like that one so okay so let's uh, put down a little bit of fabric tack I think we'll just kind of put some down at the top and bottom here where the lace is gonna go um, and just kind of spread it through the lace here. And just kind of do the edges. Oh, I'm making a mess. Making a mess. The only thing about the glue with the lace is then, of course, it kind of goes through. <laughs> but that's okay because we're going to glue some stuff on top of it, and that will that will hold it all down. It'll kind of sandwich it in. So. We just kind of need need it to be stuck down, you know, sort of there. Get it initially stuck down there. Now what did we decide? We decided this was better here, and this was up a little, and that's there, I think. Okay, let's see if we can attach this stuff. You can see that my mother-in-law actually sewed all of the sequins on. Some people glue them on, which that would be me. I would probably just glue them on um, because I don't think I have the patience to sew them. But they're all they're all sewn on, so the glue should help them stay. Like covering up all those threads where I cut them apart. I just don't have the patience sometimes for some of the things that 
other people seem to do. Let's see. See, now I've forgotten how I had that. We have it. Something like that, I think. Yep. And then that there. We got that. center here a little bit. That should help hold that lace down as well. So that glue should go through. All right. Yeah, I think that one's done and let's see how our back cover is looking. Looks like it's all stuck down and, and done. Good, good. So it's going to go like that. So we need the holes on this side. So we'll set that one off to the side here a second. Take care of these. And then we'll be ready to put it together. And I am excited to put it together and finish it. The rest of it is together. I've got it on rings, but we can put the cover on and then we'll do a quick flip through so you can see the whole journal. I'm just really so happy that this is going through. I had visions of having to punch it with the hand punch and having trouble with it. And I'm just going to trim up these little pieces on the back because that fabric is kind of didn't quite. I mean, it went all the way through. It definitely will go through the rings. Okay. And that. All right, so here's the journal. And I did use a ring binder, and I used the ring binder for a couple of reasons. First, this is a very fat journal, and so um, the ring binder definitely, oops, except I just undid it. There we go. Um, the ring binder will definitely make it easier uh, to write in the journal because it is so fat um, that it will be easy to flip the pages and make them flat or if, I, if a page is too chunky, if there's too much underneath it on, on the other side, um, I will definitely be able to just open it up and take it out so you can see it's not, not difficult to get out. You just want to move it so that the hinges are are elsewhere so we will put the back one on okay so this one is a very chunky little journal um, but the idea was to have some place to do a lot of writing and so I wanted to make sure that there's plenty of room for that um, so Let's do a quick flip through. So I did the colors of the rainbow. Each color has a quote on the front page. Let's see if I can get that to lay flat. There we go. So we started with red is the ultimate cure for sadness. And then I have uh, words that are associated with each of the colors. And I just looked up on like some color theory, sociology kind of websites to find the words that I thought um, described the colors. There were words that were pretty much, you know, in common on all of them. So each color has a front quote and then it has seven words that go with it. 
Um, and each back page has side um, notebook paper or grid paper so that there's lots of room for me to write. So this one is orange is the happiest color. Then we have originality, optimism, youth, enthusiasm, emotion, freedom, and pleasure. Um, the papers that are underneath are a combination of uh, papers that are uh, card stocks that I have um, collaged on or they're something I've painted. Um, it could be scraps, it could be um, scrapbook paper. Um, some of it's paper that I designed and had scanned in and printed, so it's digital. Um, so it's just kind of a variety of things. This one says, yellow affords only scantily and selectly, like a lover's words. That's from Emily Dickinson. Uh, and then so yellow is curiosity, happiness, positivity, fun, warmth, joy. Oops. Okay, got it stuck a little bit. There we go. And clarity. Green is the prime color of the world, and that from which loveliness arises. That's the quote here. So then we have health and tranquility, luck, nature, harmony, prosperity, and safety. And then, during the blue nights, you think the end of day will never come. That's from Joan Didion. And for blue, we have power and trust, success, security, confidence, and purpose, and loyalty. Sorry, that keeps kind of jingling against that glass. And then we have indigo. During the darkest indigo midnight, yet will countless stars bloom. We have wisdom, intuition, devotion, integrity, identity, dignity, sincerity. And then finally, we have Violet. This is the one that uh, the video I shot the other day with. We got about through. We got through about three of the pages because it was just running really long, and I struggled a lot with this one. Um, so this now you can see it finished. The violets in the mountains have broken the rocks from Tennessee Williams. Fantasy, imagination, creativity, spirituality mystery, royalty, justice is the last one and then we have that end of the book. So and then we've got that all decorated um, and you can see these if if I wanted to write on here I, I probably could even at the very back it's it's kind of chunky but I could or I could just open the page and take it out and write and and put it back in. Okay so that is the rainbow journal i hope you have enjoyed it um, i will see you next time and i think i'm going to start an, a new project journal i have a couple of them in mind so i have to figure out which one i want to do first have a great day thanks for coming bye